All right, let's look at our uh, Discord critiques. So, Maddie. Oh, cool. Here's one I've torn on whether I like or not. It would be, uh, be nice to get some feedback for future attempts. So this one's pretty interesting. Um, the scene is Lego Marvel superheroes too. So what I really like right now is the, um, the pyramids and then the terrain around it and just how you've like melted the terrain around it. It's super interesting looking. It looks like you've done like a world machine pass. Um, oh yeah. When you get close to it, it looks really good as well for, for this style of game. Like this is pretty cool. Um, from a distance, I'm seeing, I feel like I'm seeing a pattern in the way that the the stones are placed. And I think having some more stones out here could be interesting. But uh, overall, I feel like from up here, they look pretty good. When you get closer, you really need some of that smaller micro rock stuff. Like the, let's see if I can, like smaller, smaller rocks like this to ground, ground things. Legos, they're so fun. Um, yeah, and I, I think uh, roughness and like, so when I say roughness, I feel like uh, right now everything is very sandy and soft, right? So having other materials in there that can possibly help to break that up. And I think it's actually the Lego pieces is what's going to do it for you. Because the way this particular scene is, is set up is like it can't really be anything else. But like... If you look at uh, like these, oh geez, sorry. Like these details in here. Oh, I'm just gonna use this. Screw it. So um, right now this these type of details, like it's doing this. And I think what these need to actually be doing is more curving out and then dropping. So you're doing it a little bit in some spots, but like making sure that this kind of has like a sand swept shapes like that. So it just feels a bit softer and more sand like. I'm like, is that, does that work as a description? Um, this is cool though. I mean, you're sticking to the game, right? So there's that, oh, I love this detail here. Like how the sand's kind of spilling onto the surface a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the Lego head. I was about to say, there could be some more definition, and then I was like, wait a minute. The stuff in the distance is very alien. I'm not sure, like, what to say about that. These shapes here are also really interesting. They're kind of, like, melted, like, sandblasted and softened by the winds. I think chipping up these edges a little bit more on the straighter sides is going to be helpful, but overall, I think it's more of the transition from these larger shapes to the sand and just getting those little details around them to help ground them a little bit more. So it's not a harsh, like, here's an object and then there's the ground. All right, next up, look at that grass. It's so, it's so hairy. Uh, where are we at here? So this is from uh, Durzo, Art Station Challenge Progress. Just looking at for some general feedback. I'm not sure yet how I'll address the terrain, but there's something I'd like to do in another pass on. Um, so this is looking pretty solid. The grass here I really like. As long as you can figure out a way to get a nice blend transition between the the ground and the grass. And remember that it doesn't have to be even grass everywhere. Like you can have areas where it's really built up. Like, oh shit, I can't. Oh, I can't do it. Hang on. So you look at this image. I think uh, being able to great get grass that's taller around these and then like 
lightens up as it, as it comes out. Because you can think about it, if if there was mowing of lawns or natural grass breakdown and degradation, uh, where grass is really going to be protected is around these, right? And they'll get they'll get pretty long and kind of toughy, or tufty, um, and kind of like having those, and then thinking about like where maybe people travel or where movement could happen and then like how the grass will kind of go away before meeting those. And then you'll have little areas, right? Where it'll kind of like pick back up again. Like you have a little area here, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if this is portraying it very well for you, but like, like having grass around things to help ground stuff is really useful grass has this magical ability to ground stuff in a way um that uh that i mean that you would normally do with other props would allows your scene to be quite empty like it is now you can you don't really need very many props on the ground if you have grass as long as you're using the grass at different lengths and thinking about where it could be longer and shorter now having the grass that's that's much longer over here um I feel like in order for these flows to feel good, they need to have more geometry in them because they're they're giving themselves away as geometry, right? So like being careful with that. As far as um, what to do with the terrain, I'm not quite sure. I don't know what type of uh, shapes you want up here. I know that like my eye is saying, oh, this, this goes up this way. Uh, I really like this shape here. And I like how this comes out like this really like the under shadow here uh, and then you have another line that goes out like that so i think maybe if you're doing like rock faces here and rock faces here right and then thinking about like a path that can go down this way maybe, maybe use a different color maybe so if you're like using this area to like portray it a pathway and then doing this and then maybe another path here and then using that to help anchor and give reason and rhyme as to where your grass is and isn't uh, as well as like uh, telling a little bit of a story as to how things are moving around in these spaces that and then clearing the way for maybe this track to to continue onward off to the side here it's probably not the best color to be using for this uh, this track here, like getting it to continue this way. It's pretty cool though. I like it so far. The colors are really interesting too. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Oh yeah, man. Dude, the fires. I don't know if you're planning on doing that. What is there hanging bodies? Oh my God. What is going on? Dude, that's intense. Oh yeah, dude, this scene's crazy, man. Right now I feel like uh, just my initial reaction is like I'm still feeling like the scene is very flat and I th think you just need more atmosphere to separate stuff out. Like this image, for example, let it load. Um, copy this over here. So like the focus is this the stuff being stolen here, right? So I think um, I'm just going to really shittily mask this stuff out. Oh. I'm like, oh no, did I lose it? There it is. Okay. So lightening that up, colorize it. I'm going to colorize it. Uh, no, hang on. Crap. 
crap. How am I going to do this? So let me fill this with the sky color. And then we will uh, create a clipping mask. And we need to paste that and then create a clipping. Okay, so I'm clipping masking uh, the shape that I cut out, which is this. Adding this here. I'm using this to fill the atmosphere, which is the same color as the sky. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a mask on top of that so I can remove that value. Because, like, obviously the sky is not going to have that, that atmosphere, but everything else will. Oh, this is going to be difficult to do. But uh, just to give you an idea of stuff, right? So see, by pushing those those back in space, so they're blending in more with the sky, now the focus is much more on this guy here. Um, I think... I think you just need to be separating your scene a little bit more. And, and right now, like it's happening in some of the shots. Oh man, there's a video now too. Yeah, I think your FOV is really shallow. So like everything is very like, it's almost reaching orthographic levels. It's like very flat feeling. And like camera clipping through stuff is pretty intense. I'm not sure like... I would argue that uh, while you're making a huge scene, you're losing sight of like a very interesting, compelling angle to tell one story. Like this, this angle is really cool. I don't know what these are. This angle is also pretty interesting, but again, very flat. Like can you see the building right here. Oh, come on, load. Dude, this part of our station bugs the crap out of me. Like, why Why do I have to wait for... And then these are huge. I need to talk to Leo about that. That bugs me. <laughs> um, pushing that back, I ne that needs to be further back. And the stuff back there needs to be further back. This building would pop so much more with that. And then the cactus stuff here is so close to the entrance in this angle that it's really just kind of cutting into the shot. It's a huge scene, man. There's a lot of stuff going on. This shot's pretty interesting. Yeah, this is tough. This is very tough. So I, that's my views on it currently. <laughs> this is very tough. There, there's a lot of angles going on, and uh, none of them are... Uh, singing yet like there's there's some that are very close like this one this one's really strong too mainly because the focus is just on this prop um this one's pretty good too you just oh, excuse me you just have to push these buildings back again so that it's just easier to read the image and I, I really like this one if you can adjust like the, the separation of things in that. All right, what are we looking at here? Uh, just wondering what environment aspects to improve on for the next scene that I am working on based on critiques from this piece. All right, let's let's check this out first. So initial view. This looks pretty good, man. So the camera movement here is a little slow. I know that's not really to the piece. 
like initially it feels slow. This one's pulling back. If it was pulling back and tilting to the side at the same time, then it would feel more like 3D and less like a screenshot that you're pulling back on. The shot's cool. So your attention to lighting and, and detail and storytelling is really good. Like there's footprints in the roughness. You got lights here. You've got this nice little like flare thing going on with your post. Man, a lot of your camera movements are really subtle. So your your props and your assets, your props and your assets, your props, the assets, are really well done. Um, I think some roughness variation in the wood could help. I mean, these this stuff here is really good. I feel like this uh, register needs to feel like it was forced open. The amount of props you've added is very nice. Majestic diamonds. The most perfect diamonds. Hearts on ice. Oh man, blood too. Love it. Love it. Man, there's some story going on here. So I think the glass shards, like the way they scatter, think about like how they fall around each other because right now it feels like little clusters. Uh, the sc Ooh, that glass looks really good. Oh, man. That glass looks good, dude. Like the, the cracks here feel a little odd, but like how the glass is interacting with that light source behind it. It's good stuff, man. See, the patterns on here actually look the same as the patterns of the glass on the ground. Yeah, see, I think you, I think you need some roughness variation on the wall behind it, or maybe making it a little bit more reflective. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, there's like a, okay. So in this shot, this is really subtle. So watch right here or right here. Do you see it? It like fades in. So that's actually, um, you're either doing the, these cuts in Unreal or you're, or you're recording these shots at exactly their frame. So you're not really giving yourself any padding. So this shot, what you're seeing pop in here is the real-time reflections. And you're seeing them pop in because this, this shot that you've, you've edited in, the exact beginning of this frame is also the exact beginning of when you started recording the image. So the real-time reflections just kind of pop in. Um, what you want to do is record that shot fully with its motion and then trim off the front so that you don't get that pop in. Uh, let's see here. Oh, dude, that's awesome with the mask. So this is that's really interesting. This is cool. Dang, just think. One of those people is dead because of blood on the ground. Is there more blood over here? Man, the, the materials on the ground are really interesting. There's a, just a lot of details and stuff going on, which is really good. And uh, I, know a, I know a few people that would be very happy with the amount of detail you added to the ceiling. Ceilings tend to be quite flat in a lot of people's work, and you've, you've gone above and beyond to make sure that uh, those really pop. I mean, this scene looks pretty good, man. I think uh, for future work. Oh, see, these are very flat. Maybe if some of those are pried open and stuff was spilled around. Overall, the material is really strong, though. Oh, I love this. Dude, this is really good. I I am impressed. This looks dope. Uh, with with images like these, you want to be careful about how dark that background gets and how saturated these are, uh, just for PBR reasons. Same with this um, LCD screen. 
or LCD screen, this screen here. Nice work, man. Oh, dang. Dude, that material. This rug could maybe be bigger. Like, if it took up enough space where, like, all four of these were on it, that'd be kind of cool. In general, though, it's really solid. Great scene, man. Dang. Dang, dude, you got a ton of images in here, too. This is, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're getting, yeah, that's good. I would love to see a little bit more blood to tell a story. Like, maybe that person got hit, and then you you can see that they, they ran off, but, like, maybe there's some bloody steps or, like, some drops of blood as they ran away. Or maybe you just see, like, where someone was laying down and it had pooled and then maybe they you can tell they picked the body up or moved the body. Solid scene though, man. I don't have too much to say on it. Maybe looking at your wood materials and, and checking on the roughness variation that's happening on them. But you have a lot of uh, material roughness variation in this scene, so it's not much you can it's not much you can do. Time of day is really interesting too. I'd be curious to see this at night. Man, you have a ton of images in here. You might not need that many images. Oh, this is great, too. That's good stuff, man. I'd love to see some close-up of these props, too, just to see how you how you handled certain aspects of the materials. Like, where you have, like, a leather top and, like, metals, and, yeah. That's, that's really good. Man, dude, this guy's showing me up. Jesus. This is looking great, dude. I think the vines and stuff are a little on the dark side, the dark green side. Uh, this right here is pretty nice. It's pretty good. These details here are really good. Down here is looking pretty nice. It's like, are those painted in? Oh, I see. You're trying to think about, that's why they look so green. All right, never mind. Don't mind me. It's looking pretty solid though, and I like the these little uh I forget what they're called, but you're doing your research is what that shows me. Very nice, man. And the focus towards the back is really good. It's like, oh, it's an entryway. Like maybe if uh uh if the light was casting down a little bit more so that it highlights the tops of these steps, that would be pretty good. This looks nice so far, man. I don't have too much to say on it. This area here is like really singing. I need more singing, man. I need more singing. All right, what am I looking at here? I think I will call this finished. Vince. So it's like a little closet life, container, container world. Uh, this looks pretty solid. It gets a little dark here. And uh, there just doesn't feel like there's enough age or wear on the materials, at least either in the roughness or albedo. I love the attention to detail with the wires and stuff. I, I think you can call us done and then just learn from it and move on to the next scene, though. But, uh, man, that is that is a cramped experience is what that looks like. Are those Heinz baked beans? Nice. Oh, this is cool, man. It's a little organized on the shelves, despite the randomness. I would love to see maybe like a trash can and like some used up bottles or something like that. Uh, and uh, the blanket, you should learn Marvelous, Marvelous Designer and just get a nice little cloth sim going on there. It's 
some Marv. And then if you address that darkness, I think I think you call it good. Oh, the thing environment, dude, this thing's solid, man. I honestly think that uh ooh, that looks good. Oh, 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 what's this? Yeah, see the material variation in here? This is really solid. Oh man, this shot just needs some blood down here. But don't we all know that the thing absorbs all organic, so there would be no there wouldn't be any blood there. And some storytelling ideas. I mean having that door cracked and the blue light coming out of there, that's this shot, I love this shot. It has that that tight view that you that you see in the films. Solid, solid. The blue light coming in from here. Oh man. Did you know what you could do? Oh my god. Just animate this, and have the the subtle hum of the sound. Oh wow, that material up there is nice. Uh, the subtle hum of like the heaters and stuff just running. And uh, really, really subtle shifts in the lighting values of these lights, just so that it's just like you're seeing just the empty hallway and hearing the ambient sound. And then uh, maybe this light either turns off, it sounds like a light switch, or like the door slowly closes. But in general, I mean, this is this looks great, man. Dude, look at that roughness information, dude. And like, uh, oh, I'm duding. I'm just dude, man, dude, 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 dude. The wear as you get closer to the bottom of your walls. It's a nice touch, man. We're dirty. We're dirty creatures, and uh, the ground kicks up all that dirtiness. Or rather, we kick up the ground's dirtiness. It's really cool. This this scene is basically done. Solid. Oh, this is cool. Suggestions on the composition and how I might improve it. So right now it feels really tight. I feel like you actually need to be a little further back because I don't, I'm not sure. It's, it's very narrow. The other thing too, is I would look at the stool height and like how people are using the, this table. Cause it's like, there's no overhang, right? That's a little odd. Mm. Having having that overhang is really gonna help like add to the composition because then you get that under shadow and those details coming through. Um, is this a second floor? Honestly, I think the camera just needs to come back a little bit more. Need to see more of the scene. Um, let's see here. Oh, right. I mean, the, the outside scene's looking pretty good. Yeah, this stuff's, oh man, yeah. I mean, it's a little too early to say much about it. I like where it's heading. Um, double checking your scale on like how thick these beams are versus like the size of a person. And then being super careful about how dark this is and over pushing your materials like a uh, normal map. Like that's really strong. Like if I had to grab this, yeah, look at your range is all like over here. So of course, let's do this. So thinking about where these light sources are and what they're doing for the for the shot is going to be important. Like see how much more compelling that is versus just this. Like use your lights. 
I think what I'm seeing too right here is there's a light here, but um, if that light's not framed up and there's no details over here that are needed to be seen, I wouldn't put that there. That chair is completely lost against the wall, so putting a chair over here, you'll get some more interesting shadows on it, and then, yeah, you'll see it better. Yeah, again, really, really dark. And if that's blood, look at uh look at the reflectiveness of blood and see like what how the color kind of comes through it. Oh snap. Let's see what we got going on here. Loot. Uh tear it apart. No holes barred. So very monochrome. Uh the detail on the ground is very samey, so like there's not really much breakup. Like maybe the centerpiece could have like show pipe work or something like that. Or maybe the side details could be a little bit more open so you can see how things are connected. Um, getting away from the geometric shapes. I know it's it's uh, sci-fi shapes and, and whatnot, right? Futuristic shapes. But like how these how these come in like that is very strange. And then how that's echoed along the wall itself is very... Uh, like it's like you straighten it out here. So why is this cut in? I guess for a look, right? The width of the um, the ladder, it's super wide. I'm curious as to like the size of people in here. Uh, adding some props like trash cans or bins that are attached to the wall. Some text and signage telling you where you're heading. Like, where does this door go? Where where am I going if I head this way? Is this to the incinerator? If I go out that door, do I go out into space and I'm dead forever? Uh, you know, a guy needs to know that. So these are holding cells. I would love to have like a number on there so you know like, oh yeah, no, he's in holding cell four. So you'd be like, oh man, okay, don't go into four. That guy's crazy. He killed like 30 people, right? Like there's lots of there's lots of stories there. And uh, if it's a holding cell, it'd be interesting if one of these is like, you could tell that it's been opened up and like someone got out and then there was a scuffle, a fight on the ground, maybe some blood and see if there's blood, then then making this material so dark like this is really difficult on the eye. It's like, I think keeping these side pieces dark is pretty interesting because you then you can highlight this this uh, yellow yellow piece here. And then this center area can be a uh, lighter material like this. Maybe text every once in a while, like a little uh, panel here that's closed and says like so and so like this is part of the electricity for this this door and whatnot um maybe even a panel popped open and some wires coming out of it and like someone hacked the door there's like there's a little console thing here and i'm assuming these doors slide like this uh if the doors slide like having some some damage in the roughness to show that they've been sliding over and over would be really good the the pattern on the ground here, the caution lines, don't let that caution line mirror. It just looks, it looks amateur when you do that. Oh, and see, I just noticed the numbers way up here. Why would the numbers be way up here? That's hilarious. I just, <laughs> I'm like, you should put numbers on the door. They're way up here. See, my brain is like, if you were walking through this space, why would the numbers be all the way up here? You know what I mean? So like, making sure that the numbers are either here or on the door. It's where you're going to look. And how do you open these doors? I know there's a handle here, but there's got to be like some type of console thing that you type into or that has to scan your hand, maybe your eye, retina scan. This is cool. I don't even know what that is, but it's cool. The material surfaces are pretty interesting too. Love the little micro details. Uh, yeah, I mean, material-wise, this all looks pretty good. This is quite dirty, but, you know. This shape, though, this weirds me out, man. It just doesn't follow the flow of everything else. Oh, well, that's interesting. That has a huge screen. I think, so, when you have a screen this big, I think uh, instead of having a single logo on there, maybe the logo's here, and there's more of a user interface, and, like, how you use it is present. This type of detail, you need tons more of that, like... Like, is this a paint strip? I'm not sure. But, like, uh, what is this? Where Where is there, like, is there little buttons there here? Where's the bolts? What's holding everything together? Oh, there's the bolts. 
Are those them? Yeah, those are them. They're really close to the edge. You gotta be careful about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, overall, dude, I love this spot right here. This feels good. Feels good, man. Are these, like, if these are compartments, I'd love to see some of those, like, pulled open. I like, like, an area that's pristine is not as interesting to me as, like, an area that looks like it's either been looted or, like, is in use or has been used. Is there a trash can? Is there chairs? Maybe like these holding cells has like a little viewing port and one of them's open. Like maybe the, maybe this little piece here opens up and slides. Maybe a hand, like an arm is reaching out. A chair that's been sitting here since like someone talking to someone on the other side of the door. So it's like all these things you can do. Where's all the cables and the wires and stuff. Anyways, in general, I think this is a pretty cool looking scene. It just is, it's lacking. Uh, so the design is a little strange with the door and it's lacking in like storytelling elements and uh, micro propping and little details like that. Pretty cool though. Pretty cool. Oh, snap. Indoor HDR, flat outdoor HDRI. Oh, this looks pretty good. Saturation feels like it's all right. I don't know. There's the height difference between all the wood pieces is very, um, very extreme. And I think uh, as far as like tiling this across the ground, I think the visual sample that you have represented in this space is quite small. So the tiling is going to happen really quickly. So what you've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve? I would probably make that twenty-four. And then that should be enough detail. Like you want to do like a two meter by two meter tileable. So however many wood panels would fit in a two by two meter by two meter like tileable, that's that's a good like ratio. Either two by two or four by four. That way you get that variety and, and whatnot so that it's it's harder to catch onto the tiling. I think this depth stuff is going to be really interesting if you have like a, a vertex paint for like dust layer or something like that. Stuff's cool. I mean, in general, though, it looks it's pretty solid. Really interesting roughness information going on. I don't have uh, really anything to say on it. Let me see if you had anything you wanted me to say. Several materials, would love some feedback on this one. There's some varnished mahogany planks, a bunch of small damage and dust. So the damage and dust stuff looks pretty good. The roughness looks pretty interesting. The tiling is quite nice in UA4, but it does not project on uh, a, wait. I don't have the project on my laptop at the moment, so Substance Designer SD screens will have to do. That's fine. I mean, I think, like I was saying, Maybe you're saying it tiles well. I guess I need to see that because I feel like the sample amount you have here, you're going to see the tiling pretty, pretty quickly. Anywho, I finally got you guys some videos. Thanks for hanging out. It looks like the webcam is ultra delayed, but what can you do? Uh, I will see you guys later, and hopefully the stream will be back and running on Thursday. See you guys.